this next one, this is the hardest one. I got this one and then one more, and then I'll wrap it up. Forgiveness, it's the single hardest one, I think, of all of them. I mean, how many of you, think, think of right now, think of a relationship that is strained in your life or a relationship that you've lost. It's because, probably, a lack of forgiveness, right? I know it is for me. So it's an easy definition. We all know it, giving up resentment when wrong. But I have two examples I want to share with you. The first one is when someone has wronged the company. And this is a story where usually we, you fire somebody, they're gone, right? And when I came from the General Motors world, you would never rehire somebody you fired. Well, I want to tell you a quick story about Eric. And Eric was a seasonal worker at Stone Mountain Park in Atlanta. And he got fired for a safety violation. And I didn't know him very well, but he Facebooked me. I, I Facebook all of our employees if they want, and we communicated. And I was very impressed with what he had on his Facebook and just the kind of person he seemed to be. So I asked our general manager at Stone Mountain to give him one, you know, would he give him one more chance? Would he look into it? It was his decision. I didn't tell him what to do, but I just asked him to look into it. So they hired Eric back, gave him a non-safety related job. And he was doing good. I come to the park about two months later, and I run into Eric, and he's a big old six foot four, broad guy, and he says, uh, Mr. Mamby, I, I really appreciate what you did for me and what Mr. Rakesraw did, who was a general manager at the park. He said, I wonder if you could come to my graduation. And I literally, I couldn't speak. My, my tears just welled up in my eyes. I, I fumbled for my cell phone. I just couldn't believe that this guy was asking me to be at his graduation. That, I, that, that, little, that little thing that Gerald and I did was that important to him. And what, what, I, what I found out is Gerald had six brothers and sisters from six different men. No, no father figure in his life ever. He was the oldest. He worked every day to try to provide for his family. And we tried to get him into West Point in the Naval Academy, and he got the recommendations from Congress, but he had no extracurricular activities because he was working all the time. I tried to take him to a baseball game once. He wouldn't go because he wanted to work and support his mother. So I learned so much about forgiveness and giving somebody another chance that, that maybe they needed. And this is a picture of uh, Eric with his family um, at, at graduation. And it was just a really, really special moment for me because I had no idea, no idea we had that kind of impact on him. And then one, one other story about forgiveness, and this has nothing to do with Hirsch and Entertainment, but this is so powerful that I just want to share the story to encourage all of us to be better forgivers in our businesses and, and really in our lives because all these are life principles. They're not just business principles. But th this couple is actually Marky, my wife's aunt and uncle. It's Ed and Mary Lou McCulley. This picture is from the mid-50s. I bet you could tell that. Um, nice couple, Brady Bunch or whatever. But um, Ed McCulley was one of the five missionaries that were, that were killed in Ecuador in 1950s. And you remember Jim Elliott and Nate Saint? They were speared by Aka Indians, and they were... I won't tell you the, the, the whole story, but they were trying to minister to him. The Akas were violent. That No one had ever come into contact with him and lived. And these five men were speared to death on the beach as they're trying to minister to these Indians. Anybody else, I know I would have never gone back in to try to minister to those people. These women should have just gone back to America and probably gotten out of there. But two of the women went back into the tribe with a woman who could speak the Wadani language. They went back in when nobody had ever contacted that tribe without being killed. And they ministered to those people. And I think because they had a woman who could speak the language, they obviously weren't killed. They went back in. 80% of that tribe became Christians. And they went from such a large homicide rate that they were going to be extinct in a few years killing each other and killing others, that, that it went and became a peaceful tribe. 
And it's just an amazing story of forgiveness, but it keeps having ripples. It keeps going out because Mary Lou's granddaughter went to Ecuador and visited those Indians and lived with them for a week, as did my wife and our two kids. And one of the men in the party that killed her grandfather, one of the Wanani Indians that killed her grandfather, baptized her in the same river where her grandfather was murdered. And then one of the men in the murdering tribe, Menkaye, came to the United States. He toured with Stephen Curtis Chapman. You may have seen it. And he toured all over the country telling this story. And another one of the men who was murdered, his grandson was the godson of Menkai. And Menkai went to his graduation of, in, from high school and also baptized that young man in the same river where Menkai had killed this, this, this boy's grandfather. So you think about that and the forgiveness and the ripple effect of forgiveness we have no idea the impact when we forgive somebody. And, and Mary Lou and Ed had no idea at the time what good could come out of such a terribly tragic situation. So I just encourage all of us in our lives, in our work lives, we should, we should all try to be a little bit more forgiving of each other and give people other chances. Does it always work out well? No. I mean, I have led alcoholics, drug abusers, potheads, I've tried, I've rehired alcoholics numerous times. You know, one of them, unfortunately, uh, well, one of them lost his own life. One of them just died of alcoholism. It doesn't always work out well. But I'd always rather look myself in the mirror, especially when I go to those folks' funerals, which I've done twice in my career, and say, I did everything I could to bring this person back. So that, to me, that's what forgiveness is all about. And then... Um, the last one, and then uh, we'll, we'll close here. I just want to show a little bit about commitment and to give you a few ideas of how to weave it into your own businesses instead of just talking about it as words. The first thing we do is everybody, every leader in the company goes through servant leadership training where we teach these eight words of servant leadership and we teach these principles. And when, they're, when they graduate, they get the statue of Jesus washing Peter's feet. Now. In, my, in our corporate office, I know for a fact we have, we have one Muslim who's our PR person. We have a, a few uh, Jewish folks, and I, I'm sure quite a few agnostics may not have any faith at all. They don't have to take this if they don't want. It's interesting that the Muslim person did actually put Jesus in her office because she loves the values. She loves working for a company that has values and holds people accountable to it but it's not something we push on anybody. We talk about Jesus as a leader, not necessarily as savior of the world because we do employ people of all faiths. Then we, when, we, when people come to their evaluation at the end of the year, they get evaluated not only what we call the, the B goals, I'm sorry, the do goals, which is hit your financial target, hit your financial target, hit your customer score, but we also grade them what we call the B goals. How are you gonna be as a person? And that's defined as these eight words of servant leadership. And so you can see if they get the best score on their numbers, but they're also doing it the right way, then they're upper right-hand box. And they actually get the best raise if they do both. So we put our money where our mouth is. We put money behind these principles. If they do both poorly, they're not going to be with us for very long. And, and then if they do one or the other, then we, then we work with them along the way. Um, I'm not going to go through this for sake of time, but this is our whole business model on one piece of paper. But the, the important thing about it is everything on the right side, you see a customer, a customer score, our employee, uh, employee goal of being a great place to work for great people. You've got, you've got brand safety, stewardship in the middle. Those are all what we call the do goals. That's what every business has. But the B goals, it's the fletching of the arrow. It's what guides the arrow. That's our servant leadership principles. And that's how we integrate it into our culture so everybody understands what a B goal is, what a do goal is, and that you've got to practice servant leadership. So that's how we take life principles and integrate them into the business. So hopefully, this is giving you just a little bit of a feel of how to possibly take 
a, a Christian principle of love, love the verb, and integrate it into a business. But I can tell you for me personally, which is um, really a whole different story for a whole different time, I was lost for a long time in my career and worked at a lot of different places trying to find the answer to how do I find contentment at work. And for me, when I took these eight words and I made those my personal values and brought them to work and implemented them at work as well, and I had perfect integration between my personal values and my work values, it has brought me a contentment that I have never, ever had before. And I used to just always keep moving up the ladder, taking new jobs. I've been at the same place since 1996, and I absolutely love it. It's the most fulfilled I've ever been. So I encourage all of you who are thinking about going down this direction, you will attract the best people, you'll keep the best people, and I, and I think you'll just really enjoy the path that God will lead you in trying to implement his principles in business. So thank you very, very much for your really great attention, and I appreciate all, all the time. Thanks.